Well, it's a day ending in Y, so the gaslighting and emotional manipulation of economically and financially unaware people is in full effect. Pretty much all peoples of Earth could benefit from an Econ 101 class, and it shows. Over 90% of working people are employed and don't understand the basic economics of how a country runs, how businesses work, how supply and demand works, and they know that. So they emotionally manipulate and gaslight people that aren't aware of this basic financial function. The vast majority of people that open small businesses fail in the first two years, so most people don't even try to open a small business, so they don't even understand this basic fundamental. Yet these exact same people are the first ones to fall victim to this total con job. They hear something that sounds right and they're like, yeah. And when I say that over 90% of people are employed, I mean they don't employ other people. They sign the back of a paycheck, not the front of a paycheck. They don't need to manage sales, marketing, inventory, supply and demand, navigate market factors, competition, logistics. No, they just show up and collect their paycheck and then some of them go and say, oh, it's the workers that created it. No, some other person that saved and deployed their capital are the only reason you have a job in the first place. Yet they're the first ones to get demonized because there's less of them. Now this is playing out perfectly and flawlessly in real time to the supposed advantage of the demons in power as they demonize oil and gas profits. And most people have a visceral reaction to even the mention of these companies. It's the first and easiest group of people to demonize. Oh, those dang oil and gas companies, they're making record profits, they're polluting the earth, or whatever they want to tell you. Everybody is like, oh yeah, get them. While simultaneously not even understanding or realizing that oil and petroleum products and mainly cheap energy are the reason we have the most prosperous nation the world has ever known. It's literally the lifeblood of this country's mere existence. And it's such an easy target. Everybody needs it, everybody wants it, but nobody wants to buy it. It knows no, it cares not about the color of your skin, your race, your gender, where you're located, it's all the same. It's the marketplace that we're all in, it's like water. And naturally, right on cue, the demons in power are always looking for somebody to blame. Anybody but themselves. So their target right now? Oil and gas producers. And they'll say, oh, the oil and gas companies are having record profits. It's price gouging. They're price gouging. Most people don't even know what this means. Do they even validate or verify? Do they even prove any evidence that they're actually doing this? No, of course not. Does anybody even check the balance sheet of these publicly traded companies to see that their profits are so extravagant and so extreme? And of course not. Major American corporations like ExxonMobil, Chevron, these are publicly traded companies. Their financials are more than available to every single person with the internet. You can see how much profit they made. You can see their descriptions from their leaders about how they invested their money, where their profits came from, where their losses came from. ExxonMobil is a publicly traded company. You could open an E-Trade account in five minutes for free and buy a share. It's $111 a share. Any person could go and purchase a, a slice of this company. They even pay a dividend. Anybody can share in this profit. It's not the old boys club. You can go buy a share tomorrow. So now what they're saying as another last ditch effort before the midterms is here's another person to blame. Again, anybody but ourselves. ExxonMobil, for example, make, re made record profits. Look at them. And if they, it's un-American. It's not patriotic that they did this. Oh, and then they proceed to threaten ExxonMobil, a great American company. And of course, not without fault or scandal like most companies are, but that's beside the point. If you simply go on Gagal and look at the ExxonMobil publicly traded stock, you can see their financials for the last five years, 10 years, lifetime. Go ahead, I'll wait, go ahead and pull up their annual revenues for the last five years and look at what happened in 2019, 2020, and 2021. In 2020, ExxonMobil posted a $22 billion net loss. They operated all of their people, all of their employees, all of their investments that they've been setting up for decades upon decades, all these shareholders, and they still, at the end of the year, after all that work and all that investment and all that capital tied up, they lost over $22 billion lost. Now, did the American taxpayer help to offset that loss? Did we chip in for the L that they took on that? Now, because ExxonMobil is a publicly traded company, they have to release their full financial reports every quarter, and there's a statement to investors from the leadership from, of the company. You can go back to every single quarter and read the statement of where they invested, how they saved money, what they spent money, what they lost money on. Now, first, let's keep in mind that these companies have been under a lot of scrutiny of the, of the, of the public, mainly because of the long pen 15 of the government, the establishment, threatening them, demonizing them to the public, making people hate them. Accusing them of this, that, and the other thing. Taking away their ability to lease on 
on new lands, taking away their financing, saying that they're polluters or they're bad or no good, and they're, we're going to take it. We're going to take their their livelihood away. The ghost of Joey Depends even said on the campaign trail, he's like, I promise I will eliminate fossil fuels. I will eliminate that industry. Well, if you were an investor in that business, it might be kind of difficult for you to, I don't know, maybe garner more investors, retain the investors that you have, make your shareholders feel comfortable that their investment is sound and your business will continue to make money, not just for the next year, but for the next 10, 20 years. It literally is a public threat, not only in the eyes of the public, but about the policies that are soon to come down the pike. Aside from that, they give you garbage leases or don't have any new leases or take away the rights of leases that you were supposed to have. If the, if the government turns on you, what are you supposed to do? Where are you going to go? They limit your ability to produce, to create new refineries, create additional regulations or red tape that add more costs to your business. They throw a wrench in your operation intentionally. So 2020 comes, you lose $22 billion, you're getting all these threats from everywhere and anyone, and then you have to restructure, you have to figure out how to keep your business afloat. So what they did is clearly written out in all the investor reports. You can read it yourself. One of the things they did while entering this period of uncertainty and high scrutiny is pay down over $9 billion of debt, reducing that expenditure for interest while simulta simultaneously taking advantage of low interest rates from the Federal Reserve Bank and the general marketplace and buying back their own stock, aka reinvesting money in their own business. Contrary to popular belief, they don't make the rules, they just play in it. Don't hate the player, hate the game. So then while they had a, a financial and economic downturn, what else did they do in addition to paying down the debt? They reduced their structural costs. They improved their supply chain and logistics to free up more capital so that they could benefit when the market turned around, which it would inevitably do. They repositioned their capital as any great company would do so that they could benefit from the market turnaround. And then in 2021, their net income was 23 billion. So they worked an entire two years to only make $1 billion of net revenue. It took them a full calendar year to recoup the money that they lost in the previous year. It's available online. You can look at the balance sheets. You can read the financial disclosures. It's all there. And numbers don't lie. So then, after paying down their debt, reducing structural and logistics costs, reducing their interest payments, aka making their company leaner, then selling off some of their investments and other sectors to recoup capital, in 2022, they and their shareholders finally see the benefit. And then they get demonized for it, and of course hit with more threats from the establishment. And in turn, more public pressure. Because if you don't say anything when they lose, but then you demonize when they win, the establishment is picking winners and losers. These threats need to be accounted for in their investments, in where they're going to position their money. Are they going to reinvest in more drilling? Are they going to reinvest in more refineries, more employees, knowing that their profits are going to get taxed in that way? Because when a business is making a ton of profit, not only does it incentivize that exact same company to ramp up production so they can meet that demand, it also incentivizes other companies to get in the game. Profits encourage investment. Profits encourage production. And that, in turn, increases the supply and meets the market demand. But when you don't allow them to do that and you demonize them for it, all it does is enrich all of the producers overseas because the market price is the market price. And if they can only produce it for a certain price here, people are going to go to foreign actors, ones that don't like us very much, and they're going to buy the oil and the petroleum from them. And those companies aren't going to increase their production. They're just going to keep selling at the high rate. It's total blame shifting, total hypocrisy, total finger pointing, total blame game on one business, one industry. And who suffers as a result? You, the consumer, the everyday consumer, specifically the lower and middle class that are purchasing these overpriced, unnecessarily overpriced goods because the companies that make the profits by providing them to people at a reasonable rate are not allowed to or not encouraged to increase their investment and thus increase the supply to meet the market demand so the price stays high unnecessarily due to policy. So they say, oh, they're price gouging. They're making all this money at the expense of the people. They're doing this. It's un-American. It's unpatriotic. What about all the pharma? What about all the companies that just made billions upon billions of dollars? What about these companies that made literally cash from the taxpayer dollar only, where the only buyer was the U.S. taxpayer? What about them? How come no one's talking about their profits? Because it's total fake garbage distraction, finger pointing nonsense. Every single month we are witnessing gaslighting in the biggest con game of any and all time. They're gaslighting us about what we can do with our bodies. They're gaslighting us, gaslighting us about inflation, about industry, about the economy. And people are actually signing up to choose more of this. They want more of this. Total emotional manipulation and, and money shifting at scale. 
the biggest con in history, the biggest transfer of wealth in history happening at a rapid clip over and over again, month by month. Emotional manipulation and mass hypnosis at scale, taking advantage of the fact that people don't understand basic economics by design. They literally finger point and blame shift at these industries that quite literally keep the country running with inexpensive energy, while simultaneously and artificially raising the stock and the value and the worth of all of these big pharmaceutical companies. And that's just the beginning because it's hypocrisy all around. This profit is too much, but this profit is okay. They don't care, but they're taking advantage of people that don't understand the basics, that don't even take the time to just go on Kagal and look it up. And this, like so many other things, eviscerates the lower and middle class and creates incredible, widespread, unnecessary, needless human suffering at scale. You think your life was at threat because of the sickness, because of the poisonous air? Well, you know what's a lot more dangerous than that? A house without any heating. Somebody that can't afford food, that can't afford shelter. But this is the darkness at work. This is their game. Emotional manipulation. They want you dumb, they want you uninformed, they want you in a perpetual state of victimhood, and they will be there to save the day. And how will they do it? By playing into your emotions and milking you dry, extracting every last dollar that you have until you have absolutely no choice to be subservient to the state. And just like that, the game is complete. All rights, all freedom, all everything, all prosperity, all self-preservation eliminated in perpetuity until the end of time. And most people can't even see what's right in front of them. So keep falling for it, guys. Keep regurgitating the mainline narrative. Keep lining up and begging and signing up for more of it. But let it be known that there is a switch because policy and politics are downstream from culture. Andrew Breitbart, the educator, the enlightener, the truth teller, that is the modern hero. Because the most expedient way to change the world is to change yourself. And the way you move mountains is by changing minds.